<laughs> yes, the live show's back again, Mark S. Glad to have you here. And look who decided to join me. Yep. <laughs> Figured it was about time for me to drop in. Yep. So, so we are live right now. So we will, I'm going to go ahead and give everybody my normal spew of things about what we're doing while everybody files in. Then we'll start saying hello to some people and things like that. So tonight we're going to be continuing on the lie, on the vice, the filer's vice. And comically enough, we're going to be filing it tonight. And we're actually going to be doing the finished filing, or most of the profile filing that we need to take and get done. This is where we left off from when it was hot filed, and this piece here has been pickled uh, already. So pickled steel has a really nice gray color after you get it set and done. I'm not going to show uh, all the hours necessarily that it's going to be into filing everything, every last surface and plane on it because I want to get to the decorative stuff later on. And we've got some other pieces that we need to forge before we start decorating and things like that. Uh, but what I'm going to be showing tonight and illustrating is I'm going to be illustrating the file work that is on the screw portion that we have made how to true this up nice and round. I'm going to be showing some of the file work there and then I will also be taking this piece here and showing you how I do my file work on an odd shaped piece like this to get all these surfaces nice and flat and pretty looking. So, so the first step in this we're going to talk about uh, the actual uh, how bright you and how bright and shiny you can get something by hand you know and you can really take it up a lot further beyond than just what people see all the time, which is like a rough filed finish. Mm -hmm. And I want to show how you can bring it up a little shiny. And I've got an example piece done in brass. So, so that's what we're, we're going for tonight. I'm going to try to keep this relatively short, maybe about 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. at max. That way it has better replay value. And also real quick, we do have Super Chat enabled for those of you that have burning questions for us that just can't wait and you want to throw some bones our way. <laughs> yeah, see I slicked that in there. You yeah, did. you guys could throw some money our way and you get your answers uh, mm -hmm. answered, answered quicker, questions answered quicker. Mm -hmm. I don't really show favoritism so I'm trying to, uh, I'll try to get to everybody in the chat if I can, but if you feel like donating to the channel in that way. You, the super chat function should be enabled and it should be a little dollar sign on your comment yeah thing. I think it shows up as a little dollar sign there so you guys can tap that and then there yep, yep. and we get 70 cents on every dollar that you send our way so yeah just so you know all right let's say hi to some people all right 45 in here so far yeah all right no one's missed anything yet <laughs> all right let's see here Ro royal crow forge hello graham pepper good to have you here for the Honor Forge. Also, I'll link up to you too as well. Humanity. Uh, Brian Neely. Hi. The Pagan Smith 26. Great channel. Learn something new every time, all the time. I'm glad you do. Glad to have you here. Uh, Flipazoid 27. Yoo-hoo! Big spring blowout! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. off of. Hello, 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 everybody. We're going to get all the way down here to the list. Hello, everybody. Sorry if we missed anybody. Corey Shire, good to have you here. Um, Rustic Design and Blacksmithing, good to have you here as well. Arthur Henrique, good to have you here all the way from Brazil. Welcome back to the shop. Oh, Jess, do you have anything to share? Um, they ain't seen your face in forever. Yes, sure. Why not? Uh, these last, I don't know, couple of weeks. Put her uh, on the spot. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it's definitely tax time here. I've been going mm -hmm. through pile after pile of paperwork. Yeah. Um, getting ready for that. I'm uh, near the end of it. I always like to actually file before the deadline yep. in April. So I'm going to be finishing up that up uh, by the end of this weekend. So... Yep, so hopefully yeah. she'll be back in a lot more of the live stream, so. Yes, and I do, I want to forge another project soon, so. Mm -hmm. yep. And you want to put up with my shoddy camera work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, good to have you all here. You guys say hi, they didn't oh. say hi to you. All right, hi, Corey. <laughs> oh. And I... J.G. Clark said, welcome back, Jessica. Welcome. 
Oh. Let's see. Paperwork. Yep. Yep. Lots of paperwork, I'm sure. Yep. Oh. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> That's my mom, Angela Lee Adams. So, all the way from Florida. She's still visiting with, still visiting with my sister. Yep. I think they're snowbirds officially. Yeah. We'll have to yeah. see what happens next winter. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be two weeks. It's been like a month and a half, but... Yep. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mike. Um, Corey, yep. when is Jessica's Corner coming? Uh, coming yeah, soon. We're working soon. on the series. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh. I actually have four projects planned out already. I just have mm -hmm. to get out here and start making one of them. So. Yep. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of difficult. She, We've got to make time in the shop for her, mm -hmm. and that's in between me filming, and then usually if I have her in the shop. I don't film anything, and then I don't actually get any real work right. done for the do day anything. either. It's so, yeah, yeah. Or, well, I can't, yeah, do I can't do anything. anything. I can't interrupt her filming and stuff like that. So, yeah, so yep. kind of kind of interesting, but <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no offense at all, there, Rigid Ironworks. No offense at all. Oh, I wouldn't want to watch my ugly mug all the time, anyhow. No. All right. So, we're all caught up. Charles Gibbons, good to have you here. Sarah Mike, once again, good to have you here. So, miss you too, Mama. So, you got to you got to shout out your mom in your live stream, don't you? So, all right. So, I'm going to try to get you a little bit closer here just cuz and I'm going to go over some of the file stuff and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the filing technique that we're going to be using. I'm not going to bring this piece all the way up to full shine just yet uh, because there's still going to be some chasing and engraving work that I'm going to be doing on it. So it's kind of pointless to bring it up to too high of a finish at this point. Uh, so we'll go ahead and flip it around and see where we're at here. Yeah, I have to build her a separate shop. That's for sure. You should be able to leave that foot okay. and just spin it. And down we go to what I'm <laughs> talking about. Nice there we go. All right. So what I'm talking about here today, Jessica will be reading off questions if you guys have any. Mm -hmm. You may want to step out of that light there. Right. And be on the other side. Well, here. I can do the light. Good. Okay. Hopefully you all can still see that good. Yes, it's good. Okay. So as you can see, I have quite the array of files and things laid out here. You definitely don't need this many files. I just laid them out here as a representation that the files come in all different shapes and sizes. They come in different uh, tooth count, if you will, or, or uh, aggressiveness of the file. So you can get fairly fine files all the way up to really heavily coarse files. And uh, it, all it all depends on what you're wanting to do. So usually, just like with grits of sandpaper, you go from a coarse grit and you slowly work to finer grits. It's the same thing in file work. And you can take and obtain a quite shiny finish uh, when that is to be said. So after pickling, I pickle all my pieces and they come out gray like this. That's how you know that you got to pickle. Any areas that you see that's dark is where the pickle hasn't ate away all that scale yet. Or it was a piece of foreign matter that doesn't react with the pickling. The pickling I'm using is a high strength vinegar, so to speak. So, oh, all right, got it for our super chat. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for that 50 bucks there. Um, see, Based on Ironworks, Derek Smead says, in all your years crafting, do you have a piece that stands out to you as your favorite and why? My favorite piece that I think I've ever done was a when I did my two week internship with Tom Latinay, I made a lock with him and that's one of my most favorite pieces not because I done the best job but because I uh, because of the experience and how much impact that had on me fundamentally as a as a smith and uh, I really treasured that experience and I still have that lock today it still functions yeah. and I can see all the horrible places I went <laughs> wrong and I'm not even close to being as good as Tom Latinay, not in this century. So yeah, we'll have to share that sometime. I don't, yeah, we, we may have a picture on Instagram, but I think it's like way back. So yeah, it's be way back. So and thank you once again for that super chat. That really does help out the channel. Oh, 
Uh, where was I? I lost myself. Okay, so yeah, so the pickling, I use a high strength vinegar, essentially. It's a 10% acidity by volume, and uh, it's you can pick it up at Home Depot. I think it's the HDX brand is what it's called, and it does a really good job of eating the scale away in about an hour. These have been only been in the pickle about an hour uh, on heat or a low boil, if you will. Oh, any questions so far? Let's see. Let me see what we got here. Um, oh, grab some more. Derek Smead had said, "That's awesome. Any chance we can get a video on it on your lock?" On um, the lock? Yes, I'd love to do that. I'd like to bring it out. Yeah, and maybe uh, we have some photos too. Perhaps we could do kind of a slideshow plus some live video on that, where you could yeah. talk about the lock a bit. Yeah, I'd love to do that. That'd be a great video. Chaos, uh, Chaos Rain says you should do this on Twitch. <laughs> We've heard a little bit about Twitch. We're 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 curious about it, but yeah, there's. Uh, I believe it takes three live streams a week commitment for that. So yeah, but, which is very tough for us right now. <laughs> yeah, but thank you for the um, recommendation. We'll have yep. to keep that in mind. So, I'm going to show. Uh, you get any more questions? Yes, Thomas Ursa, What does the pickling do? The pickling eats away at the scale, the forge scale finish. Let me grab this. Uh, grab this. Here. Well, one of these pieces. So, after you're done forging, you all are familiar with this kind of forging scale. You know, you got pieces and ash and stuff stuck to it from the fire, things like that. Even if you brush it off, it oxidizes and it puts on kind of this uneven, heavy scale. Prior to that, you have the mill scale from the factory. I don't know if anybody can see that pretty good. Yeah, that's decently. Okay. Anybody can see that. So you have the mill scale. It's still scale, but it's an even finish, as where this is an uneven finish. This eats both. So it creates this gunmetal gray and very supple surface that takes really well to filing. So that's what it does. It eats away that mill scale, and it eats away that fire and forge scale right there. Yeah, and we actually have a video completely on pickling. Um, we did that back when we did the forged pan series because Roy did that um, to, for the pan body to get that cleaned up. Yeah, so um, that's that. Any other questions? Yes. Let me move on uh, to my demonstration piece here. Let's see, Arthur Henrique, do you do hot filing? Uh, yeah, I did that in the last live stream that I have done. I did a hot filing demonstration. Uh, and I, I showed how, how to take and do hot rasping and hot filing for all these surfaces. All this here has been hot filed so far. So you can see how smooth that is so far, but we're going to take it up to the next level. Let's see. Donald Roberts, do you ever get attached to the stuff you make for orders? <laughs> As uh, if you don't want to send it away. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. Not anymore. Um, you know, there's a few, th like... There's hammers and stuff. I, I make decorative hammers sometimes for people, and I do get mighty attached to those. Like, I start trying, I kind of play around with them a little bit, and mm -hmm. the best thing I can do for myself is not do that at all and just uh, put them in a box and ship them as yeah. quick as I can. Otherwise, I'm like, huh, well, you know what? There's that little defect right there. I don't think I can ship that out, and it, uh -huh. there's really not a defect. I just want to keep it. Adding so, it to your collection. Yeah, I just want to add it to my collection. <laughs> right, so, wanna... yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out a piece. I'm going to go run outside real quick and pull out a piece from the pickle and bring it in here so you can see what that looks like mm -hmm. and where it goes to this. And then I'm going to talk about how to bring something from a rough finish like you see here on this brass piece to a polished finish like you see here on the brass piece. That was all done with filing and hand techniques. All right. Well, he does right that. You can answer okay. Some questions, huh? All right. Uh, hello, Paul Freeland. Let's see here. Um, Chaos Rain, where do you get your metal from for forging? He gets a lot of it from the scrapyard uh, for street recycling down in Dayton. Um, let's see. Scott, what are some good kid friendly projects that build confidence early? Uh, let's see. Um, like doing little like little dishes, uh, like copper, the kids can work with that cold. And um, that Roy's done that with our kids a couple of times. 
and they kind of get used to hammering and uh, it's less of a, you don't have to worry about less it dangerous. cooling off and stuff like that. Yeah. So if everybody can see this right here, this way it looks when it just comes out of the pickle. Some of the parts will rust. If you got some scale steel on it, it'll kind of rust up on you. You'll see some of the parts, it'll have, uh, you know, it'll look kind of grayish already. Things like that. Now all we're going to do is we're going to neutralize this by rinsing it in water. I'll do that over the slap tub. You want to make sure you rinse it really good. Don't want to leave any of that pickle on there. And then you want to take any old rag uh, that you have lying around. I buy these painter shop rag type things from, uh, from Home Depot. They come in like a four pound bag. They're like old cotton t-shirts. And then you just want to take and rub the surface of this to get all that old scale off. So it kind of dissolves it. It takes most of that away and leaves it on your rag there. It cleans it up really nicely. Yeah, it does. It's like gray gunk that comes off of it. Yep. You guys see how clean that's looking there. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is my most favorite color of steel. Um, if I could trap this gunmetal gray look on it, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, I've tried before, but ultimately it kind of rusted. So, mm -hmm. so if you apply something to it, it kind of rusts underneath. I don't know why. Maybe it was a local event. But there you go. This still needs it. This had some heavier scale on it, so it needs to go back in the pickle for a little bit. You can see here where it didn't quite take this area right here. That should go back in the pickle for a little while and be continued to pickle. But you can see how that cleans that up real nice like. All right. Any questions about that portion of it? Let's see. <clears throat> Let me see if there's anything about the pickling. Uh, nope, not yet. Oh, okay. Let's see, uh, KS Rain says, so a lot of the items you make are from my old steel. Uh, yeah. Uh, so a lot of the, a lot of the items I make, pretty much everything I make, is out of my old steel unless I have a special project where I need wrought iron. Then I'll use actual real wrought iron. Uh, I've got a small stash of it that I use, and I just save that for real special jobs. Uh, for the most part, it's all my old steel. And then I have a small selection of tool steel that I'll use in the shop, mainly coil spring and 1045 and also 1095 I keep on hand in the shop to make tooling out of when it's a critical piece of tooling I need. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see, Cody Dixon, what is the acid pickle juice called? Sorry, may have missed that part. Uh, it is just vinegar. It's like distilled white vinegar. It, you can get it from Home Depot. It's a cleaning vinegar, not a food grade vinegar. You can get just regular cleaning, vin like a food grade vinegar with 5% acidity, and it'll work just fine. Uh, it just takes a little longer. A cleaning vinegar has like a 10% acidity level to it, hmm. which does a really great job. Not for consumption. Go ahead. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh. Base and Ironworks, Derek Smead, he said, how much would a how much of a super chat would it take for a 15-minute phone call sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I am a very hard guy to uh, get a hold of by phone. Uh, the best way for you to do it is just to email me what mm -hmm. question you have. If you have a question or if you just want to have a chat over the phone, we'll have to schedule that in. Uh, but no super chat necessary for that. It just, mm -hmm. it will go off of the, it'll take me a while to get back to you. Yes. Um, and Tommy or so, you had asked if we received your email today. I saw it. I uh, haven't had a chance to read it yet. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to move, I'm going to move on to this, uh, to this little brass example piece that I'm showing here. So if you see here, this is like the original finish, I'm trying to get this to where it's not looking so shiny in the picture. This was like the original milled finish. This is where I saw cut the piece off mm -hmm. for yeah. roughness. You can see the ridges. And this is where I took all that saw cut marks out wow. of this piece. 
So it's very, very shiny at this point. And this was all hand done fairly quickly. Brass lends itself to very quick demonstration if you're trying to show file techniques. But basically what, I've, what I did is I started with a coarser file. If I can find it, there it is. So I started with a fairly coarse file and started with nice even strokes going laterally like this. Okay? And then I brought it down to one nice surface thickness and then I brought in a finer file like this, a flat mill file, and then I went at kind of a catacorner to that or a diagonal to it. Finally, the last step of it, I took the file and I draw filed it. So I came back towards myself, like so, with the file. Or linearly, I took the piece and filed it. Mm -hmm. That took out the marks from the previous session, and it got everything running the same way. Then I took... This block, just a standard pine block with a slot cut in it at about a 45 degree angle and put a small piece of sandpaper. This just happened to be 240 grit in there and it breaks over just like so. And I use this as a push stick mm -hmm. to be able to clean up that surface finish the rest of the way to take out any sort of file marks. Cool. Then last but not least, to put that final sheen and shine in it, I took a little bit of buffing compound you can do jeweler's rouge or whatever. I rubbed it on this on the surface and I used a rag much like this to just rub the finish and work like a cloth buffing wheel to get that final shine to it or glint. Mm -hmm. So that's how far you can go without any sort of mechanical advantage whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So you if you ever wonder how am I going to buff out this little piece? You don't need a buffer at all. You can just use hand tools and get there fairly quick. I did this in the three minutes it took before uh, the actual live stream started. It didn't take long at all then. Okay. Questions about any of that real quick before we get going. We're about there. Let's see. If anybody needs to get a hold of us via email, it is ChristCenteredForge at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, Billy Martin, our Friday is going wonderfully. Yeah, thank you everybody for being here, by the way. Everybody who's tuned in, make sure you hit that like button once for us, if you would. That really uh, helps, out the, helps out the channel. Let's see. Um, I guess if you disliked it, you could hit the dislike button, too. That's, that's always an option. It doesn't show, though. It only shows thumbs up, so yeah. that's, a, that's good news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I think we I can continue on. A flat wheel, a flat wheel and buffer would be a quicker way of doing things, but it can also be a more dangerous way of doing things, especially when you're working on small pieces like this that have a lot of snag points. Mm -hmm. Not always is it easier to just go to the buffer, uh, and. I'm trying to do this as traditional as I can. I won't be do, you know, using standard buffing compound or even going to this extreme with sandpaper. I'm going to do it all with filing. I'm doing this as simply a testament of skill to come about doing this. Uh, you know, it's fun for me. If I was doing this in a production kind of mindset, well, one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick this style of vice to do in a production mindset. And two, if I was doing this in a production type of thing, yeah, the quickest way to have this cleaned up and finished is the way to go. Okay. Let's see, one other question here. The Pagan okay. Smith 26, have you tried hand making your own files to better suit your projects? I have not yet. That's something I really want to do. I know Dennis over at DF in the shop He's got a pretty good presentation on how to make your own files. And there's also another guy on, the, on YouTube by the name of ClickSpring. And he has a uh, great way of making files as well. And he does it out of mild steel and then he case hardens them. So that's pretty nice. So, yep. Graham, thank you for the super chat. Graham, thank you so much for the $2 super chat, buddy. We really do appreciate you. Thank you for being a longtime subscriber. All right, let's move over here to the vice. Relocate. Let's 
relocate, ladies and gents. Let's see, where do you need me to be out of the way? I need you Back over, here. over here. Okay. Hold on, everybody. We're going to get this set up so this way you guys can stay in it. Stay in it to win it. There we go. Yeah. Whee! Roller <laughs> <laughs> coaster. Oh. Alrighty, so I'm going to show you briefly on this piece how you can grip weird objects and still be able to get them filed in the vise. There's a lot of the ways that you can do this, uh, but the easiest way is to put in a pair of lead jaws or soft jaws. You can take and use copper as soft jaws, although this is a, a little more difficult to grip onto this piece because it's a little more solid. Or if you have brass, you can use brass inserts or brass jaws if you've got a thin enough sheet. Uh, just anything to help prevent the, met, the steel jaws from marring or leaving bite marks that you have to try to file again. Here you can see I've got it kind of at an angle. You can, I can also grip it like this to work the other end. But this is kind of the dance. It's a little bit of a dance to figure this out. These soft jaws really do help increase the biting capacity because you can't always grip on 100% to this piece. So like if I want to file across there, I can grip now just on that little end of that jaw, that other vise, to be able to file this up nice and clean. Uh, also, likewise, I can grab just a little bit and leave it sticking up mostly so I can file this surface. If I was in the steel jaws, it would be very difficult to leave that much stick up and not have it just work out of the jaws. Unless you have very clean machinist jaws that hold very squarely. I do not. This is just a, you know, a post vice for forging. Or that's what it's meant to be used for. Any questions on that? Let's see. I don't think we have any on the vice yet. Was there somebody there? Uh, yes. Yeah. Dragon Works. Iron Forge, thank you very much for the, is it $1.99 or $10 Super Chat? Either way, thank you for the Super Chat. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, oh, Graham had also said, what is the most memorable thing that your landlord taught you? Oh, <laughs> uh, there's a bunch, but one of my favorite things that my landlord taught me uh, was to not overthink it. To not overthink it. And his simple, he really had a simple way of looking at things. And <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it. One time I was really struggling. I had made a copper hearth plate for a person in Sweden. It was just a big heavy plate of copper that uh, was really long, rectangular shaped, and wide. And I had to texture this whole thing. And after I got done texturing, as you know, a plate likes to warp and shift because all that material moved. <laughs> that guy, I went back to seek his help. I couldn't for the life of me get this thing straight. Mm -hmm. It always had a pucker or a buckle or something. And just to show you what kind of man he was, he he looked at it and he he chewed. You know, he used to chew chewing tobacco and he spit on the ground and he said, Well, if you don't want it bent there, don't hit it there. <laughs> and that was his biggest piece of advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically what he was basically what he was teaching me uh, as he alluded later on was you're overthinking it kid mm -hmm. you know just calm down you know it's not that hard if you don't want it bent there don't hit it there mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was a very simple subtle but it did have impact uh, as far as in <laughs> in my in my blacksmithing career here that simplicity let's see here for a moment um Techromatic, thank you for the two dollar super chat yeah thank you so much so now i'm going to start cleaning up these surfaces and giving a little file demonstration mm -hmm. now i want to point out one area here that's happening if you all notice hopefully you can notice here yeah, cover up some of that light okay Wherever you see file strokes happening, and you don't see file strokes, you're cutting at an angle. If I was cutting completely across this piece, nice and flat and square and true, both sides of this piece would come down to the center equally. Mm -hmm. So now I know I need to pitch 
Now I don't need to be coming down too much. I need to pick up mm -hmm. my, the tail end of my file and make my strokes. Also, one of the things, uh, this isn't a rag on Alex Steele at all, so please don't take it that way. Alex Steele was doing some filing. I was watching in one of his videos. He was doing some hand filing. I forget what it was. It was, But he was having this hourglass effect happen to him. Mm -hmm. and and he was having some problems with that and where that comes from is from your downward pressure so if I press down here on the end of the file and I press down here on this end of the file this file actually bends ever so slightly ever so slightly and it creates a crown in the center if that makes sense. There's higher pressure on this side of the item, higher pressure on that side of the item, and fairly low pressure in the center of the item. Mm -hmm. So the sides get ate away first before the center does. Mm -hmm. And that's where that comes from. If you've got a lot where you're doing, try to put all your pressure from one side of the file. And stop, if you can, on here. Now, in his case, he was inside of a piece, so he couldn't do that, but he could have put all of his pressure on just one side of the file, and that would have eliminated that. Mm -hmm. Just as a thing. Let's see. KS Rain, shouldn't they be one smooth motion and pick up and place down on the cut? What's that? Say it again. Okay. Shouldn't they be one smooth motion and pick up and place down on the cut? Yes. So you always push. Files only cut on the push stroke. They do not cut. When you see guys just running them back and forth like this, they're either very good or they don't know how to use the file because they're dollening the teeth. You're working those teeth back and forth like that and they snap off and you dollen them. Mm -hmm. uh, you could take a brand new file right out of the box and pretty much ruin it right out of the box by doing that. Questions, honey? Yes. Uh, Jason Bourne, 777, says... Is it true that cross-cut bastard files are for amateurs? Uh, I wouldn't say that's true. Um, I think... I don't know. <laughs> I guess I don't really have an opinion on that. I'm using a, a bastard file right now, a cross-cut bastard, so I don't consider myself an amateur filer by any means. But... I do, I will say that they leave quite a rough finish. That's not always desired. So I really do like a good mill file to do all the finish, final finishing on it. Okay, can everybody see that, how it's coming down nice and shiny? Yeah, it's definitely getting shinier. Do we have too much light on the subject there, ladies and gents? Yeah, it might help if you take away a little bit. Okay. Here. Oh, Jason Bourne 7777 said I was just joshing you. Okay, cool. Files. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never I never can tell. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's helping at all. I'm afraid. Mm, oh, yeah, that's too dark. Yeah. I'll just all right. with that for now. I'll just leave it at the shiny. Mm -hmm. So there's this one little area here that you can tell I'm getting it even all the way across because I got that one little area there that needs to be done up. Now, if you see right here, this is where I let my filing lapse for just a moment. Do you see that little shadow line? That shiny little bit? That's a bevel. I want to eliminate that, so I still have to come down nice and square. It's not a problem at this stage, but at later filing, that could be an issue uh, because that's where I let the file angle drop for a second, and it took off too much material there. Ball Camp says, any recommendations on good or decent file sets? Uh, right now, I don't have any recommendations, okay? My files that I'm using currently are Nicholson Cup files. Uh, they are okay. They are not made like they used to be, so they're not as good as they used to be, from what I understand. That is not my own observation. That is something that I was told by Tom Latney, that they're not as good of a brand as they used to be. What the work. There's some very expensive German-made files out there. 
But I don't know any of the names of them. Yeah, we, right. Roy did a video. A file. Roy did a video a couple of months ago on uh, all the files in his toolbox. So that's in our video section. Yeah. So now y'all can see this. I hope you guys can see this. I think it's on the wide out angle. Yeah. I can tap see it that once. Well. Tap it once to the view. There you go. There we go. That's much better view. So now you all can see that shaping up there. I still got a little bit more to go. I still got a little bit more to go right here. You can see where that, that I've got that pocket that sucked down from the drift when we drifted out that. So I still got a little bit more, but you can see how even that plane of finish is now to that. Or it's at least or it's at least shinier. Glad you guys could see better. Good, good, good. Um, and Lynn Brad said, "Yeah, you said that they weren't as good as they used to be." Uh, like I said, I haven't, I haven't, I don't have really, I haven't been around long enough to say that I have an observation on that they're as good or not as good. So thank you for that. Chaos to get uh, the piece doesn't have a whole lot of scale on it because he pickled it. Yep. That's what he's talking about towards the beginning, using the vinegar for. Uh, let's see. Cody Dixon said, my grandfather works for Nicholson File in Anderson, Indiana. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I believe, like, you can buy Nicholson Files now, like at Home Depot, Lowe's, things like that. And I believe that they're made at, uh, they're made in India now, I believe. India or Taiwan. I'm sure the package says. I got a package here. So this is a mill file. Uh, let's see here. It's gonna say somewhere. Mexico. Wow. This one was actually made in Mexico. Yeah. So there you have it. They're made in Mexico. <laughs> I had one that said it was made in like India or Puerto Rico or something like that. Let's see. Oh, County Line Forge says, Nicholson is made in Mexico now. The ones that say made in USA are the ones you want. So, yeah, maybe, like, if you went to a garage sale, you could find them. But then again, like, you're going to have to be careful that they're not, like, really beat up and used. Yeah. I will have one suggestion for you. And this is one that Tom Latney suggested to me about files. You do not want to buy files that have been all just been put in a box and are rubbing together. Mm -hmm. You're get you're buying doll files. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Buy buy them individually packaged, or if they're in a box lot, that they've been wrapped in some sort of paper and kept away from one another. Mm -hmm. If they have not, you're buying doll files. Cody Dixon says, "I just have my grandfather's old files. That's pretty cool to have that passed down from your grandfather." Yeah. Paul Freeland, thank you for the $10 super chat. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you for that donation to the channel. That does help out. It does. It really does help out the channel. Um, and uh, we, use st we use stuff that we get from our AdSense and things like that to buy new camera equipment. And Lord knows that that is very expensive. <laughs> A lot more expensive than I had ever guessed that it would be yeah. getting into this. But uh, to get good camera equipment, and not even the camera equipment, the stuff to be able to process video footage is the expensive part. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, I got that good and cleaned up there. We're going to stop there. I'm going to continue here. And you guys can kind of surmise how the rest of this goes. You pretty much just file File away. Try to file flat and true if you can. Sorry, that's too far away. Corey Shire says dual files are only good for making knives. <laughs> <laughs> now I have heard people soak them in acid and uh, revive the edge. I have never done that. I guess we live in a modern enough world that I just go out and buy another file. 
<laughs> if I need it that bad. If it was an heirloom or something to me and wasn't made in Mexico, I guess I would care more. Not that I have anything against the Mexican culture. I actually don't have anything against them at all. Uh, just hardworking people from a different country. Um, but if it was some special tool that I had made or a file maybe that I've made myself, yeah, I'm definitely going to soak it out in acid. says old files equal knives. Well, there you go. A, a way to well, there recycle you go. everything. Yeah. I tell you what, if I ever wear out enough files, I'll send a box. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. Yeah, a lot of people would be like, send me a file. <laughs> that could get expensive. says here in Honduras we use files for the edge of nails and machetes. That is awesome. I mean files are, I mean I'm removing quite a bit of material here. I know it doesn't quite look like it on camera but I'm really moving quite a bit of material all at once with a file. Um, and it's a lot more controlled than a belt sander or an angle grinder with a flap disc. Hint, hint. <laughs> hint, hint. When Bradstead says, if you clean your files after every use with a proper wire brush, they would last longer. Yeah. So, I was, Lynn, you're beating me to it, buddy. <laughs> you're you're saving, <laughs> you're, I was trying to save that trade secret for a little bit later. <laughs> They make these wonderful things called file carters. Looks like a cat brush. Yep, looks like that. They're meant to work it only in one direction. That direction is where the crooks are. And they get into the teeth. So they're meant to be used like this and they brush out the teeth. If you got a good wire brush, you can do that too as well. But it brushes out the teeth and keeps the teeth clean. Yeah. Darn it, Lynn! <laughs> That's <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Let's see. Brian Neely says, I was looking for good files recently, and Grobet files appear to be pretty good, or at least well recommended. Okay. They're called Grobet? Yep. G R O P E T. Okay. Well, I'll have to check those out. All right, getting down to the nitty gritty. If you all notice, I'm using the entire length of the file. Let me back them up a little bit so they can Here. see your Here, technique like there. Okay. Yeah. There. Whenever possible, you want to use the entire length if you can. This is a little odd piece here. You want to use the entire length, if you can, of the file. Don't want to stay right in the middle. Now here I'm just hogging off material to get everything down to plane. So use the whole length of the file if you can. And as I've shown in other videos, try not to use just your arm muscles. Use everything that you got when you're pushing in the file. It'll make your file work go a little easier on you. And you won't have as much difficulty. Here we have it. Mm -hmm. It's looking very shiny. Yeah. Now I'm going to come back in with this little mill file here and I'm going to clean up this shoulder. Now I'm not going to get too crazy with this at this point in time because I still got quite a bit of work to do on this all the surfaces and stuff. This is what I would consider a rough filing. Later I'll come along 
and true everything back up nice and square. Make sure everything's square to, it, to itself and to the other relatable parts. Questions, hon? Comments? Yes. Good evening, Herb Page. Let's see. Both Mike and Lynn said they both like the Nicholson files the best. Uh, Techronmatic says, I think Baco does some decent files. Question? Okay. Um, that's spelled B-A-H-C-O. What is it? Baco. B-A-H-C-O. I don't think I've huh. heard of them. but Never heard again, of them. But <laughs> I haven't looked at all of files. So. Uh, John Coffey says, don't have a belt grinder, so I do everything with a file. Well, good way to understand what I'm talking about then. Mm -hmm. uh, Champ Ironworks says where to buy good files. The Nicholson files, I believe, they can be bought at Home Depot or any uh, home improvement store. Yeah, I don't... Although some of them oh, are no. specialty ones. You have to look for them online. Like some, some of the uh, different sizes and things like that. Hello, George. Yep. Thomas Ursa says, how are you going to thread the bolt for the vise? Well, that's going to be, I'm going to just use a, uh, as far as for the bolt for the actual vise, yeah, the screw, the thumb screw or whatever. That portion. This here, uh, it's going to take a little bit of a different technique. I haven't fully uh, got the piece of material. It's going to take a bit of tooling. It's going to be a little more complex, and I'll be able to explain with hand gestures. <laughs> uh, but basically, you can file these threads in here. The other thing that you can do is you can braise threads onto it as well. And I haven't fully decided whether I want to do the wrap and braise method or if I want to do the filing method. I may show you guys how to cut a few teeth that way, file it, and then, uh, well, not bore you for six hours <laughs> with that uh, to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. At any rate, both methods I have not done before, so it'll be a learning experience for all who are involved. Champ Ironworks says, sorry I'm late. Good to have Jess back in the Smithy Roy? Question mark. Yes, it is. <laughs> Good to have her back in here. But I tell you what, I think some of you guys prefer her over me. I'm not going to lie there. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't ever put a vote up on the channel, you know. Yeah, we won't be doing a vote on that anytime soon. I would still like to have a little thought that I'm loved. <laughs> or at least, at the very least, needed. Of course you are. You're on this channel. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think they would vote otherwise. Oh, Herb Page was just asking, do you use a file card? Yes, he does. Yep, well, right not. there. JD <laughs> Clark 45 says better together. Yep, that's right. Yep. I wouldn't be anywhere without my wife, so. All right, we're going to file that boss down nice and square-like. Grammatic says, Roy, I use a rocking motion for filing a radius. Are you familiar with this technique? A rocking motion. Yeah, like that. Uh, yeah, so you're talking about mm -hmm. like this when you're filing the radius. Uh, yes, that that is a good way. That'll get you in a little bit of trouble sometimes of getting things. Like if you're trying to do something that's a column or round. If you don't grab it, grip it exactly the same each time, you'll get something that'll start going egg shape on you. And you can have a problem with that. So I'm going to show you a way around that that was taught by Tom Latney. He says no, it's different. But okay. It's be... Okay, it's, it's a different yeah, rocking it's different. technique. Okay, okay. Well, I would say you'll have to show me sometime, but <laughs> it's I, tricky. it might be a little tricky for you to do that. Uh, send me a video of yourself doing it. <laughs> do that. Just clean up the top side of this boss. Transition. Just 
I'm trying to keep the file on the piece that I want to be filed and not digging down here. Now, a well, good thing to do if you have a file that has a wore out edge or if it's a file that you don't much care to keep around the greatest, you can grind off one edge of that file. So say it's a, say it's a flat file like this. You grind off one edge and it's called a safe edge file. So you can slide that on the piece and it won't cut. It won't cut down into the piece as you're trying to file off something squarely. Hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And by the way, nothing cuts like a brand new file. This is a brand new file. Oh, is it nice? That's, you are going a little sliver with that. Oh my god, that's beautiful. <laughs> you don't know what a doll file feels like until you get a brand new file. Files for Christmas. <laughs> that's what you need, huh? Yep. Let's see. Mr. Gravity says, Hi, thank you for your mail answer about the books. Finally, I have I have The Backyard Blacksmith and Iron Menagerie. Awesome. Full of good information. Awesome. Glad you enjoyed those. Let's see. Earth Page, so when are you going to make your own files? I answered that one a little earlier. That's something okay. I would love to do. I'm going to have to watch Click Spring and DF, at the, DF in the shop on that one. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, um, Techromatic said he does have a channel and he has a video on it. The rocking technique. Okay. So. I'll go check that out, Techromatic. I will definitely check that out. So did everybody see how I squared that up there? Trued that up nice and it's a clean? little shiny. A little shiny. There we go. That's better. So there we go. We're getting that all shined up there. And we're 51 minutes in, so I lied, effectively, <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm just not good at keeping time. <laughs> no, I'm just not good at keeping time. So as you see, that's how we're going to get that whole thing filed up. And this is getting pretty clean. It's getting pretty clean now. That was clean enough as a forged finish with pickling. A forged finish with, you know, the hot filing done to it. That wasn't too bad. It could pass if you're just making it for yourself as a tool. But if you're trying to make it all decorative and whatnot, you got to go the extra mile with the files. You can see I got that all cleared up. And that's all one side. We're going to do that again. So, yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. I haven't lied yet. I got six minutes, right? Uh, seven, seven and 20 seven, seconds. Seven minutes and 19 seconds. Seven minutes and 18 seconds. <laughs> so on and so forth. So, all right, well, with my uh, time remaining... One of the things I want to do here, this is going to be a threaded handle. So there's going to be a handle here. I'm actually going to leave a portion of this square and the rest of it's going to get filed round. And so I'm not ready to do that stage of that yet. I've got to get everything cleaned up and true. So this way this is all squared up to the actual jaw itself. I've got to get that all cleaned up and true before I can file this round to shape. One of the other things you could have done, you could have forged this if you knew the exact diameter and a, pet, and a pair of swedge dies and forged that out exactly round the way you need it and that would save some file work. But the file work's really not that hard to, to accomplish on this. I'm going to file it down to the size of the threaded stock that I need for, for the tap that I'm going to use to put on the decorative nut on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions on that? Sure, let's see. Uh, Graham Pepper says, Roy says, thanks for the money. See ya, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know I'm not like that, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate the sentiments, anyhow. Flipazoid27 says, you should make a post vice. Smiley, cryy face. <laughs> I'm not sure what post kind of vice. face that is. Yeah. A happy face? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess it's a happy. I don't know. It has tears, but it's smiling. So. Okay. I don't know what the name is. Laughing the so are. hard. Laughing yes. so hard, he's smiling. There you go. I don't know. Sure. Something. We'll go with that. We're going to go with something. That's for holding that, is it? Okay. Yeah. So if everybody can see this, it's a very simple wood block that has a hole that's been drilled in it or filed, whichever that you want. And this allows you to take and turn this piece right on around and around like this. 
so you can get stuff filed a lot smooth, a lot smoother, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So this just gets locked in the vise like so. And then just use a file on it. So you turn it back towards yourself and go forward with the file. It cups it. And it cups it and it holds it and allows you to get a good, clean, round filing. Iron rice forged or sorry, Iron Sunrise Four Sheds, do you make filing guides and jigs to help you with your hand filing? I do not, usually. This is about as much as I've made. Uh, I've heard of filing guides. I haven't seen, I have not ever seen Tom Latinay use one, so I'm trying to strive to eventually be along that level. So this is about as much jig as I've seen him use. So we're just going to let that roll like that now. And we're starting to clean that up nice and pretty like and keep it round. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking for. Any questions on that? For the honor, Ford says, oh, learning has occurred. <laughs> <laughs> High learning has occurred, eh? <laughs> um, oh, the emoji was laughing so hard he is crying. Okay. Thank you for the clarification there, Lynn. So now you guys see how smooth that is. It's starting to clean that up. It's still got a few spots on it. Mm -hmm, that are deeper down. That are deeper down. Get the right lighting someday in this shop. All those super chats will help go towards that. One day get a little shadow. How's that? Yeah. Is that yeah. enough shadow? Yeah, I can see the little blemishes. Okay, so there's some little blemishes there that we still got to take down. Again, you just keep rolling it. Cody Dixon says that we should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I like writing quite a bit. Um, yeah, what about you, Roy, though? Do you like writing? I don't even like reading, <laughs> let alone writing. He's the type to use the voice record button when he's sending a text message instead of piping it out. You know, little shortcut button. Uh, Donald Roberts, have you ever got metal hot enough to melt it and pour it into a mold? Casting? Uh, to do casting, I have done silver and brass and zinc. But iron, no. Never done that. Bridget Ironworks said, I realized the power in files when I started filing designs on my knife spines. Great, looking great, Roy. Why, thank you. If you start feeling like your file's not, you know, it's giving up the ghost, it's not doing as much as it used to. That's the time to start file carton. Your file. It gets it nice and clean again. So, as you can see, I'm letting it roll as I go this way with it. That is another way of truing that down. You want to go back towards yourself a little bit at first. It's a little more aggressive. But then you can let it spin free to true everything up or take out any unevenness that you've caused by doing that. Like any little bite marks, if you go like that, it'll clean that right up. Remember to let it go free though, otherwise you'll create a flat spot. Don't want that. There you go, you can see how quickly that's cleaning that up. Mm -hmm. How's that looking to everybody? Oh, there we go. Would it help if the block was wider? If the block was a little wider, yeah, if it went, if it spanned the whole section, it would probably be a little bit better. This block was actually made to aid in filing the barrel of keys. Ah. So that's the reason for this. Mm -hmm. 
It wasn't actually intended for this purpose. But it works. This was made just for filing the barrel of the key. Did you make that at Tom's? Uh, yes. Made that at Tom's. And as you can see, I don't have something the right dimension for this. So I'll end up making another one just to do this portion here. Uh, but I'll show you how it looks a little bit on the offhand. Uh, you can still do it. It's a little more work because, you know, it wants to camp with you. Graham says, stick it in a drill roy, then rest your file on it. <laughs> <laughs> Power filing. Yeah. I can stick it in a drill and put it to the belt sander, too. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do this with all the old-fashioned techniques out there, traditional techniques, if I can. You can see that's got a lot to go. I won't go real far on that tonight. You can start seeing how that cleans that up pretty good. Yep. Yep, both work. Whichever way it get, takes it there. Also, about this stage while you're working, you can definitely start telling, uh, you know, where you've got, after it's been pickled, whether you've got welds took or not. You'll see cracks open up, and you'll see all sorts of cold shuts you didn't see before. Things like that, you know, that's right, there's the toe of the scarf of the weld. You can see from the end, since it pickled out the scale that was on there, mm -hmm. you can see that now where that wasn't present before. So you can see where that welded in. Yeah, it's like a half moon shape. It's not yep. on the other side. And to do something like that, you would just essentially hold your file at a good angle and continue to rotate it like this and do it like you would do anything else when you're wanting to true all this up. At first, you would probably file this locked in the vise like this. It'd be easier to get the majority of the bulk of the work done, but then to take and do the finish the cap decoratively, you'd want to go this way with it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. That's good? Yeah. All right, any questions? Let's see, for the Honor Forge, I think you might have answered this earlier, but have you made the threading for the vise yet? No, I have not made the threading for the vise yet. That'll be coming very soon. So, well, hopefully not too soon. I want to get to forging some of the other little elements and get some stuff decoratively filed up first. That way you guys can start seeing how it's kind of going, and then we'll do the, th we'll cut threads and do all that goodness. Once I've got my mind wrapped around it a little better. How I'm going to do it and make it make sense to everybody else out there. <laughs> Let's see here. Iron Sunrise Forge. Mild steel and wrought iron are close in carbon content. About 0.08% for wrought and about 0.1% to 0.25% for mild steel. Are they similar in terms of easier or harder harder to file so uh, so rot versus mild so filing out rot uh, the carbon content really doesn't have much to do with it as far as toughness of filing in this case and the reason why I'll say that is because the file is so much harder than both you won't really notice a big difference rot iron is just a fuzz softer to file but the real, the real difference in the difficulty is since mild steel is a homogenized steel and it has a grain, uh, you know, it's got a really soft homogenized grain, it's very even to file, as where wrought iron, depending on what you're filing and how fine the grain structure is, the actual grains, the wood grains of that wrought iron, if, it, if you have a, like larger grains in it, you can actually tear out. A piece of material. Mm -hmm. You can file down past the the silica layer or whatever that it's holding all together and you can actually tear out a piece of metal mm -hmm. with wrought iron. So you got to be a little more careful. When you come to things like edges, mm -hmm. edges of material, you can fray out here on your edges and you just file and it frays and you file and it frays That'd and it files and it frays. And so you got to be a little more gentle with it. Mild steel, obviously you don't have this with mild steel, so it's a lot nicer in that respect. God, I'm glad he addressed that. That was another question about this, the grain structure, too, making a difference. Yep. So, good. 
uh, green pepper. Joey Van Deerstick has two bids on the last two days on this. Yeah, on wrought iron. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I've watched his videos on that. So he does a pretty good job of explaining it, processes and stuff. I'm not a thousand percent up on all the processes. I am fairly w well versed in working with wrought iron, so I do know the. I do know quite a bit about how it forms and functions under the hammer, uh, but as far as the processes in which it was made and manufactured and all that other stuff, he seemed like he had a pretty good angle on that. I could recommend those videos for sure. Jeff Sandling, hi guys, a little late but made it. Hope I didn't miss too much. Awesome to see you back working on the vice. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm glad. So anyways, so that's what we're gonna do there. As you can see, we won't need a ton of this because I'm actually going to, this was left really long because, you look at these two pieces here, I've already filed more than I'm going to need. Mm -hmm. Got to remember, this is going to be a lot smaller. And that there is going to be a lot smaller by the time I'm done with it, but decoratively filing it, so to speak. So yeah, so I don't need but maybe that much of this here. Mm-hmm. And even that's going to be a little bit too much. But I'm going to leave on my handle until I'm done. Does that look good? <laughs> it looks good. For the Honor Forge says, ah, my kids are climbing on me. And then there's like a face with a funny look on it. <laughs> Champ Ironwork says that emoji means he's knocked out, Jess. <laughs> that's, yeah, I guess I need to look up the dictionary on emojis <laughs> thank you everybody for bringing my wife up to the times <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, don't, I don't hardly ever use those little things so so i'm gonna give this little jig here just one more little thing if anybody wants to screenshot that mm -hmm. hold it there for a second screenshot that's what you need to take and do that like i said this was made for filing the the barrels of keys but mm -hmm. not really for this purpose what else we got? Iron, Iron Sunrise Forge. Thank you for the information on the wrought iron. I've never had the opportunity to work with it before. Yeah, wrought iron's a fun thing to work with. I, I actually prefer it, but considering it's in such short supply and high demand, I try not to use it for anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a catch-22. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also said, I talked to Joey on Facebook. Have you ever thought of collaborations with other Smiths? I've thought about it a little bit. Uh, the one difficult thing for me with collaborations is just time. The time attribute. To really do a good collaboration, you got to work on like a project of some sort. And that, you know, that takes time that I may not necessarily have. Uh... Also, I'm not familiar, like, as far as, you know, I've never met any of these people in person, shook hands, said hello, you know, kind of that thing. So I'm not sure they'd want to collab with me anyhow. Right. <laughs> so, it's, uh, I do some collabs with Swan at Warp Legacy. Uh, me and Daniel Moss has had a few things, not really collaborations, but kind of just shouted each other out. Yeah, channel mentions. Channel mentions, things like that. Um, are you still doing the star thing? What star thing? For the 4th of July. The star with Quan. I don't know, he hasn't mentioned on that how much participation he's had mm -hmm. in that. I may very well be. Yeah, so if to clue you guys in what I was asking him, Juan's doing something special for the 4th of July and asked for YouTube blacksmiths uh, to contribute a star to his project. And so, um, so the catch is you have to sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to film yourself singing uh, um, one of the patriotic songs. I forget which one. It might be the Star, the star Spangled, Spangled okay. Banner. Okay, that makes sense. The, star <laughs> the one Banner. of the patriotic songs. <laughs> it's like sense. the patriotic song. Well, no, there's about, <laughs> a, there's about a dozen really good ones. There's a dozen. But, um, okay. <laughs> Anyway, that's what we were talking about. Look at my little American historian here. It's Yeah, it's part of the curriculum this year with the kids, so we had to memorize a bunch of them. Good. Uh, Paul Snyder says, buy a belt sander and you have a lot more time on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, and then for the Honor Forge, he has one. He just tortures himself for our entertainment. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing here for the Honor Forge. <laughs> Torturing myself for your viewing pleasure. Champ Ironworks says, I think the ability to repair raw iron is an established in an established piece is important, but I don't know if it's worth producing to make new items out of. I like... I don't know. Uh, I guess it's your, your preference. As far as the way it forge welds, the way it acts under the hammer, I can move a mighty big piece of wrought iron by hand, by myself, uh, with a fairly small hammer. And uh, for things like that, like, I think it's great. It works wonderfully if you get the opportunity to work with another guy and a striker. Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful material. You can resize a pretty big chunk of it down to half inch square bar in no time flat. Mm -hmm. uh, just team striking and things. And uh, so that's one of those things that I like about it. So I think it would have its applications, special applications. But you're right, I don't know if it would be worth having a mass production of it anymore. At that point, it would probably ruin some of the specialness. We all know and love. It's a rarity. It's like if everybody had diamonds. <laughs> For the Honor Forge says, filing sounds nicer and more rhythmic than a belt sander anyway. Yeah, you guys wouldn't be hearing me very much if I was... On the belt sander. No, I don't think they hear much of anything. Well, other than grinding away. Uh, Joey said the makers of wrought iron died very young due to fumes, says Graham. Really? Huh. Fumes off the soda, or I guess whatever else is in it. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know whether that could be confirmed or not, but again, not real up on the wor world history of it. That's the case, well, I mean, I think everybody, I think you could attribute that to pretty much everybody in the Middle Ages uh, that had what they called a laborious job like this, unless you were a count or a duke or something like that. I'm pretty sure you probably didn't live to a ripe old age at any rate. No hearing protection, no respiration protection, no eye protection. Mm -hmm. Uh, no clue about common illnesses and sicknesses. Yeah, none of that good stuff. Well, Paul's going to Google it for us. Good, no. Paul, do it. <laughs> Champ Ironworks says, yeah, it's not a nice process, but that's when a long life was age 50. Yep. So. That's when you're considered an old man. You got to remember, you know, boys and girls used to get married back in those days, like when they were like, oh, I don't know. They were considered an old maid after 16 years of age, yeah. you know? So, people forget that whole sweet 16 birthday party was <laughs> had a little deeper meaning back in the day. It wasn't just because you were 16, you tried to find a suitor. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be an old maid. Okay, I can get carried away with filing. <laughs> you can go for hours. <laughs> yep. Oh. Let's see. Champion work says right and not Middle Ages. More recent. After all, we live in a state where rivers catch on fire. Whoop. <laughs> I don't know, what are you saying? I might have to clarify a little bit. I have to clarify. River, rivers catch on fire. Yeah. Iron Sunrise Forge, wrought iron is fairly easy and in large quantity in England. It was rare in the States because it was expensive in soda ship at the time. So there just wasn't enough of it here by the time mass production. By the time of mass production. Okay, I can get it. I could probably agree with that. Like I said, I'm not a historian on it, so I'll agree with whoever. Makes <laughs> <laughs> my logical sense. <laughs> Now, if you start telling me it was brought over here by Bigfoot, now we have issues. <laughs> or a unicorn. <laughs> Let's see. We got a hi, Uncle Roy. It's Jiggy in the comments. Hey, Gianni. 
Good to hear from you, little buddy. Anybody who doesn't know Gianni, he's my little cousin. My nephew, I mean, not cousin. Nephew. Yep, he was a co-host on a live stream back in the summer. Let's see, Basin Ironworks, Derek Smith. Quick question, I have about 150 foot of quarter inch stainless round stock that was a gift. What should I do with it? 150 foot, quarter inch round. That's a lot. Stainless steel round stock as a gift. Uh, make meat skewers. Yeah. yeah and meat hooks for smokers. For like people who like to smoke meat and things. They're always in the market for that sort of thing. Bob Lass says, faster, faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. The thing about the river catching on fire. The Cuyahoga River in Cleveland caught fire due to unregulated pollution levels from steel mills. Steel mills and other industry. Yep. And that's where we champion all those guys of old that you say, well, I don't need personal protection equipment. Because look at this picture of some guy in a steel mill at, in the 1920s. He didn't have anything for protection. Yeah, it's called he was there trying to eat. <laughs> he was trying to feed his family. It wasn't a hobby. It wasn't a hobby. He was expendable labor. And he knew it. So if they said, hey, you stand on that big giant chunk of iron and swing for all you got, you stood on the big chunk of iron and swing for all you had. Mm -hmm. And you didn't ask anything. And you worked 16 plus hours a day. And you didn't complain because they'd find somebody else to replace you. Lickety split. Say, hey guys, I think I'm going to be deaf in a year if I keep going at this. Well, that's nice. Bill, get over here. Take Jim's spot. Did anybody catch on to my cynic joke? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> Maybe somebody else did. Nobody else did. Uh, I, I was being cynical. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Jeff Stanley, whatever happened with the charity split cross idea? Is that something that might materialize? I think it will. Uh, I have not gotten back with Tim over at Big Dog Forge yet. Uh, I need to. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> I've been a little out of commission here lately, so. Cool guy says, hi all, I'm late but I made it, installed an 8x8 post in my new shop today and got carried away. Had to mount <laughs> my post my post drill and did a mock up for my post vise. Woohoo! Well you don't have to say sorry to us, <laughs> sound like you had fun. Mm -hmm. Alright. Donald Roberts says, my grandfather worked at the steel mill back in 1940s, and he said, you just go with the flow. <laughs> All right, you got that backside cleaned up decently. There we have it. Hopefully y'all can see this. Does it, that camera don't like to focus too well. Not when it's zoomed in, though. Is it zoomed in? Yeah. Can you zoom it out a little bit? Yeah, I can zoom it out. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Sudden change. There you go. So that's getting prettier. Slowly. There we go. So I still got some work on that. Like I said, I could do this for another two hours probably. To get this cleaned up where I'd be happy with it. There you have it. Well, that's not too bad. It's a long way and a far cry from that where we started. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> this deal says, I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> All right. 
Well, that's all the filing I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to flip it around here so we can talk at you all and you can see my smiling face for a second. And uh, we are only 19 minutes, well, 20 minutes, being liars, so to speak. <laughs> That's bonus. That? That's like bonus clip time, you know. Yeah, that's bonus clip time. Yeah. There we are. Hello, everybody. Good. Hey, Mike, that's cool. I'm glad you're almost done with your wolf gel tongue, so. Yeah, so on the camera, it looks really shiny. It's not a mirror finish just yet. It's still a really rough cut file finish. You can see it there a little bit. It looks really shiny because of all the light I got in the shop. But it's getting there, so. For the Honor Forge, son. Hi. <laughs> oh, uh, does anybody have any questions on the files I was using? Techniques? Anything like that? That I need to address before we call it quits for the evening? Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I have to wipe yeah. my nose there. It is a little chilly out here. Just a little bit. It's a little chilly. You can see she's bundled up. Right, yeah. I like the warmth. Brass brush for carding. Uh, no, I get this. It's a file carder. You can actually pick these up at, surprisingly enough, Home Depot's carry them for some reason. Uh, it's just a file carder brush. It's a steel brush. You can do that. Use that. All right. Uh, any technique to relieve the ache of wrists from long-term filing? Or is it just my arthritis acting up? Uh, as far as I know, uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. The best thing you can do is to make sure you're not gripping too too hard, like you're white knuckling it, you know, where your tips of your knuckles are red and in between are all white. That's like called white knuckling it. Um, oh, excuse me. Can you give me a tissue paper, honey? It's over there. I got a little blue paper towel. That's that's one thing you can do to reduce like hand fatigue and wrist fatigue as well. Uh, buy new files, and as soon as you feel like you're kind of struggling with them, go with new files again. Uh, I, I know that's something I struggle with myself. I try to wear a file out as far as I can go with it until there's nothing but shiny spots on it, and then uh, and it has like no grip to it left. But just switch to better, better cutting files, and you won't have to grip so tight and push so hard. So, sure. what part of Colorado are you from, Roy? So, I well, I'm actually I'm an Ohio native. But when we lived in Colorado, we lived in uh, Colorado Springs, and then that's where I lived most of my life there. Manitou Springs, Colorado Springs, right in there. I got no idea. Oh. Okay, any preferred file? Here, do you like spam sandwiches? I guess, maybe, I don't know if uh, that's spam. Yeah, or if right. it's the, it's like fried spam, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Not too bad, sorry. Oh, let's see here, somebody asked, uh, handle designs. I don't have any preferred handle designs. Uh, comfortable, comfortable, whatever's comfortable. Uh, I don't get anything that's not smooth. Don't get anything really rough. Especially, you'll wear a blister on your hand. Nothing with real rough or sharp edges. That's kind of a general. I know a lot of guys like to use golf balls for file handles. Uh, I have not tried that yet, so I can't recommend it myself. Uh, just because I haven't tried it. Uh, I've done some different handle shapes. But you can see they're all different. This is kind of your, just your classic file handle. As you can see, it's all smooth and stuff. To me, I find that's a little too smooth. I like something that fits my big hand a little bit better. And so I made that file handle there. That was just me whittling around on a scrap piece of handle material that I broke. So, and then, you know, this has got a much bigger handle to it. In fact, that's like my most comfortable file because it's got this really big handle on it. And I like that pretty well. All right, let's go. I don't know what that means. Don't know what you mean by that, Mom. <laughs> Old broom handle would give you lots of handles. Yeah, that could be true. Very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say the decorative one? 
Awesome to know you made your wood mallet. Yeah, I showed the decorative one. And then here's one that I made again. It's just a different one. I tried to di just a different shape to put like a lump in the center of it, you know, like that. That one's okay. This here's too small. I don't like that as well, but it works for what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, pretty much. That's it for handles on files. I mean, shape them to be comfortable in your hand. Okay, Tektronmatic, I'm going to look up that. The vid of mine is called Filing a Radi Radius Basic Filing Techniques. Okay. You want to write that down? Sure. I got some uh, chalk right there, honey. Chalk in the little dish. Okay. Oh. All right, cool. Yep, County Line Forge, you made it all the way back and back in time. <laughs> Excuse me. Not polite for me to wipe my nose in front of the camera. So, all right, cool. Let's see here. Jeff Sandling. Uh, somebody said jackhammer bits are most commonly made from 1040 or S5 steel. Yeah, but he was saying that he had a bunch of uh, jackhammer bits, and I think he was asking what to make out of it. Huh, okay, cool. Yeah, I know I've got 1045. It holds up pretty good. Uh, it's a tough steel. It's not a hard steel, so... Uh, you can hang up your hat on hardness. It won't get real hard at all, but it will uh, be pretty pretty darn tough. So, all right. Well, I think that's it yeah. for one evening. Mm -hmm. so, I thank you all for being here. Thank you, everybody who donated in the super chat. Thank you to everyone who gave big thumbs up. Uh, we greatly appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys have fun with your projects. County Line Forge is... Uh, Looks like getting back to some hammer making, so that's awesome. Hope you enjoy that project, and you know everybody keep your idea. Uh, everybody keep your eyes out on all the videos coming out. I've got some more air tooling videos and things like that coming out, but then I I also get I also have quite a few other videos in the works that are coming up. They're going to take a lot more to do, but I think you guys are going to be impressed with the projects themselves. There's some things that I want to work on personally so i think you guys like that oh yeah pound the like button there folks before you go and and i don't and somebody had said who hits the dislike button i don't know <laughs> there's people who don't like all sorts of people one person's troll is another person's treasure <laughs> right or uh, my other favorite saying is one man's friend one man's troll is another man's friend so you know we can't all be everybody's flavor of the month can we I'm caught up with some good shirt ideals right there. there. We can't right all now. be the flavor of the month. Oh, yeah, that's happening. Look for that on Teespring. Write that down. Okay. We can't all be the flavor of the month. <laughs> what do you all think about that? <laughs> we can't all be the flavor of the month. I think that's a good plan. So, cool. So, all right. You got anything you want to add, Jess, before we get off of here? No, I don't oh. think so. Nope. That's awesome. So, all right, everybody. So make sure you check on Teespring. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how we say that. What is it? Is it Christ Center? Um, yeah. Something? Well, we don't have a store page. What I think you might be able to get there from teespring.com slash Christ Center Ironworks. And, uh, and, and it'll pull us up. So yeah, yeah, yeah that'll pull us up. Yep, that that'll pull us up, and we'll put and we'll put the shirt up there. So, and the email one more time to get a hold of us is ChristCenterForge at gmail .com. That's the best way to get a hold of us. We are lagged behind severely on emails. It takes me about a week or so to just get back with Jess and and get back with you. But we do get your emails, and we are trying to get back to everybody who has emailed us. So thank you all so much for being here, and. Uh, Thanks for the live stream. Yep, best wishes to you as well, County Line Forge. For the Auto Forge, thank you for being here. Jeff Sandling, County Line Forge, good to have you here, everybody. Uh, Basin Ironworks, uh, thank you so much once again. Thank you for being here as well. Landon Clifton, good night to you as well. And uh, we will catch you all on the next live stream. Yep. How's that sound? Sounds so. good. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. God bless you. Have a great weekend and a great week.